Hello everyone, this is Kathy Farrell, National Educator with RNK Distributing. I am very pleased to be bringing you the June 2017 Project of the Month. And this month we are going to be creating embossed monograms for looped terry towels. Be sure that you download your free June 2017 designs. Included in that is your free project and the design that you'll need for this month's project, although the majority of the design will be created by you. Your free design this month comes from the exquisite Floriani Family Lace Collection, and it is actually a design that I created a motif that is a combination of the two designs that you see here on the screen. This collection has multiple designs. You'll see Walter here holding an example of how these designs fit together. So it really allows you to be the driver and construct beautiful motifs. In your handout, you'll want to print this off. It's a PDF file. It will give you your materials and your detailed instructions for completing this month's project. As far as the objectives go, we're going to be doing some intense work in the software. You will be bringing in a piece of artwork and I will, as we get into the software lesson, talk a little bit about how I made that artwork design. I actually used a third party software program to create it. I created it in Corel Draw. I saved it and then you're going to import it into the software. So if you're working in vector-based software, you can be creating designs and bringing them into your software. We're going to be working with artwork fonts. We'll talk a little bit more about artwork fonts when we get into the software. You will be creating a motif fill, and once you put that motif fill in your design, you're going to go back and you're going to edit the stitch angles to optimize the fill, and you'll also be editing the start and end point. And as you do this, you'll really see how when you have an embroidery design, you can manipulate how a design stitches out and how the software creates that design by manipulating the start and end point and the stitch angle. As far as your materials this month go, of course you need your software. You will need your free design. Um, the materials that you need, we're going to be using Floriani Wet and Gone Tacky Stabilizer. That's what we'll be using in the hoop. We will be using two types of top, topping. So you will need Floriani Water Soluble Topping and you will need Floriani Heat and Gone Topping. You will need your Floriani embroidery thread. The colors that you choose should be based on the towels that you're going to embroider on. And you will need to have some kind of contrast. I wouldn't make the thread match the towels exactly because then the embossing gets kind of lost in the towel. So I would do a little bit of contrast and we'll talk about that. I would use my thread chart to choose those thread colors. You will want to have micro thread, Floriani micro thread, or I recommend Quilter Select Para Cotton Poly. It is an 80 weight thread. You're going to wind that in your bobbin. You get twice as much thread on your bobbin and it really is a wonderful way to, as you embroider, minimize the frustration of continually running out of bobbin thread. You'll need your chrome embroidery needles, your thread chart, and then I would recommend the new Floriani Educator Tool Collection. It's got some great tools in there. We use I utilized several of them in this month's lesson. As far as other items go, you will need some high quality looped terry towels. And you know, the sizes are up to you. I would also recommend that you look around and find a practice towel. So maybe this is a cheap towel that you have laying around the house and it's been used and you're ready to use it as a rag towel or maybe go to the discount store and buy a towel, but you need something to practice on. As you create your embossed design, you want to stitch out a test of your design first. You will need a marking pen, a friction pen, or something else. I actually used a pen during this project, and it's an air pen. When you mark on your project, the air pen it actually just disappears over the course of a couple of hours in the air. You will want to wash and dry your towels ahead of time. When you do this, do not add fabric softener. Let's go ahead and get started in the software lesson. I already have my software open and have clicked on my new document. We're going to go into the file menu. We're going to left click on that and we're going to come all the way down to import artwork. I mentioned in the PowerPoint in the introduction that 
I created a, an artwork shape in a separate piece of software. You're going to navigate on your computer, and this is in your handout. We're going to go into our PC, and we're going to locate that C drive right there. We're going to open up our C drive, and we're going to locate the folder titled Floriani. We're going to double click on that. We're going to open up Designs. We're going to go to our free FTCU projects. We're going to go to June and June of 2017. As I was working on this project, I actually tried to create this shape in the FTCU software because, of course, I can create artwork in my software. I really don't have to learn a third-party program. But I was struggling with creating these inverted shapes right there. So the curve goes inside. And I found that it was easier for me to work in Corel Draw, which I do own, and to create this shape, export it as artwork. So when you look at this, you'll see that there are two files here. There's an AI file and an EMF. They are both vector files, so you can bring in either one of those. If I go to my sequence view window, once I've brought that in, I'm going to click on the plus sign, and right there it tells me that this is artwork. Let me go ahead and zoom to fit. Now that we've got our shape, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up to our Import True Type Font Artwork. We're going to left click on that and it's going to bring up our dialog box. What you're going to do is you're going to type in the individual letter of your monogram. So for instance, my first name's Kathy. I decided I was going to put a K on my towels. They're my towels. And so that's the letter that I chose. So the first thing that you'll want to do for your project is to choose the letter that you desire. Now, if this is your first time working on the project, what I would recommend is work through the project as I have done it. So work with the letter K. Use the same font that I do. Go through all the steps and do everything the exact way that I do it so that you can practice that and you know that things work. Once you have successfully completed the lesson, then go back, replicate the lesson because you're going to have to make modifications. And you're going to then come back to this step right here when you import your TTF artwork. And at this point, you're going to type in the letter for your monogram. So it can be any other letter of the alphabet. And if your letter you choose is K, you're in luck. But I think that that rules out 25 out of 26 of the letters of the alphabet. So I've selected my K. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come down under this box and click on the select tool. Now, when you come into this tool, these are fonts that are installed on your computer. So as I scroll through the font window and I look at all the different kinds of fonts that I have, I have installed additional fonts to my computer and the fonts are driven, certain fonts are installed with your computer and a lot of the software programs that you purchase install their own set of fonts. They install what's called a font library. So if you install Adobe, it installs fonts. If you install Corel Draw, it installs its own set of fonts. When you installed your Floriani software, it actually installed fonts that that the software program needed. So as you go through and you look at your font library and you can add additional fonts to your computer. For instance, this is Walter Graph and it's a font that looks like Walt Disney text and it's really a lot of fun to work with and this is a font that I downloaded and installed on my computer and I download most of my fonts from a website called DA Font. The fonts that we're going to use for the lesson and I specifically chose these particular fonts because they're installed on 99.9% .9 of the computers out there. So you may not have Waltograph font, but you're going to have, and the fonts that I've recommended are Arial. So I'm going to go up to my A's. I'm going to go to Arial and it's actually one of the first fonts that appears in there. I'm scrolling down and I've located my Arial fonts. Now you'll see that under the heading of Arial, I actually have multiple Arial fonts. So I'm going to select the first one, Arial. I've got a little sample down here. 
to show that. And within that font library, I have a lot of different options that I can choose. So if I wanted a bold Arial font, I could select that. Here's Arial Rounded. It, it actually is an Arial font, but it looks a little bit different. Another great font that you could use is a font called Bondoni. I believe that is another one that's it's a native Windows font. And so under the Bondo, Bondoni heading in here, you've got several options too. So Bondoni Bold, and I'm not sure what the abbreviations are here, but under Bondoni MT, you'll see I've got additional options in there. As you look for a font that is good for this particular project, I'll point out a couple of features about what characteristics you're looking for. For instance, the Bondoni font. If you notice, when I look at this font, it has these little flourishes on each of these fonts. And if you look at the A, it's a little bit narrow on the side there. And of course, that will impact the results that you get. And this is what's called a serif font. And serif meaning that it has those little flourishes on each font. Scroll down a little bit more. Britannica might be a good font. Another good font is one called Century. And that is a font that comes with your computer. So here's Sentry, and you can see the characters in there. But once again, this is a serif font. So as you choose the font for your project, keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and for this project, I'm going to select Tahoma. So I'm going to go ahead and type T into my keyboard. Here's my Tahoma font, and this is the font that I use. I selected bold, and then I came over and I selected about a 48 just to enlarge that font and then I'm going to go ahead and say okay and okay so here's the font that I'm going to bring in to my project so it's got really nice clean lines and if you look at this and you think about okay this is going to be negative space this is going to be fill all in the background. You're really going to be able to see that particular letter. So as you start working with the project, I would encourage you to experiment with different fonts because every font will give you a little bit different result. If you're following along in your handout, we're ready to start step three, which is on page four. And step three is let's resize the artwork. Let's center everything up and duplicate it. So as you proceed with determining the size of your specific monogram, I would recommend that you take your towels, fold them the, the way that they're going to be displayed. So for instance, I fold my towels in third and hang them over the towel rack. So I'm gonna fold my towel into third and see how large of a shape I'm gonna be working with. And the size that I came up with was five inches. So the outer part of my design needs to be five inches. I'm going to go and select my shape. I'm going to come over to my transform tab and you'll see, luckily, I've already got that set at five inches. So that's looking pretty good. Next, we're going to duplicate this shape. So, well, let's, let's center it first. Let's get everything centered up. So with that artwork shape selected, I'm going to come up under my alignment tool and I'm going to come over and select center to grid. And it wasn't just a little bit off, but you see that it centered that. I'm going to select my letter K, and I'm not going to center that yet because we're going to duplicate this outside shape, and we're going to make it a little bit smaller. This outside shape is actually going to be the frame motif, so we need to duplicate it and make it smaller. Let's select that artwork. We're going to come down, and we're going to use our selection control tools. The lower left-hand side is a duplicate tool. So there I've duplicated that, and then I just like to change the color. When I duplicate something, I change the color just as I separate that out in my sequence view window so it's on its own layer. I'm going to, With that selected, I'm going to come back over. I'm going to center that object, and this I'm going to transform. I'm going to make it smaller, and what I'm going to do is drop that to 80%. So I type... 80 in my transform box. Make sure that you have the box checked for maintain aspect ratio. It doesn't make any difference whether you're in inches or millimeters. We're decreasing this by 20% and I'm going to say apply. Now that I've got my smaller shape, 
I'm going to go ahead with my letter here and I'm going to resize that. And this is a visual process for me. What I want to do is I'm going to grab the lower corner here and just drag that until it is filling up the space. And it's very important when you create this shape that we're going to uh, do the embossing with, you have to have your alphabet letter, the exact font that you want it to be, and the exact size that you want it to be before we create the shape. Let's center that. Now we're going to duplicate the smaller artwork and the alphabet letter. So with my alphabet letter selected, I'm going to come over, I'm going to click on duplicate. Now I've got two of those. And as I said, I like to change the color as soon as I've duplicated that. I'm going to go ahead and center that up so it's right on top of the original. I'm going to select the smaller frame and I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to change the color and I'm going to align that. Before you move on, come over to your sequence view window and just verify what you have. Let's do a collapse all and you should have five objects in there in this order. So this is our original frame, alphabet letter one, smaller frame, alphabet letter two, smaller frame two. Perfect. Let's select this, let's select the alphabet letter here, the frame here, and what we're going to do is we're going to combine them. So we're going to come up and click on the Combine tool. Now we're going to use a feature here in the software that I haven't used before, but I thought this would be a good time to bring it in. We're going to use the Hide tool. So I'm going to hide the first layer. I'm going to hide that alphabet letter there, and I'm going to hide that letter there. They still exist in the program. They still exist in the design, but you can't see them in the workspace. So this is a really nice feature, and you can use this on embroidery designs and artwork alike. So this is Show, and that's Hide. To activate that Show and Hide, make sure that you click directly on the eyeball. And also, be careful not to click on the lock. Um, I was working with a customer and who inadvertently came over and clicked on the lock and could not do... For instance, when they selected an object out here in the screen, it didn't show as selected. When you lock that object, you can't do anything. So if you're having issues, just verify that your lock is undone and that your eyeball is grayed out. We're now ready to begin step four in the handout. And step four is to add the motif fill. So select your shape. And we're going to come down on our Stitch Effects toolbar and we're going to choose Motif Fill. And it's going to fill that background in. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn this on 3D so you can see this. Notice that we've got an errant thread coming right here through the middle of the design, and we're going to clean that up. Also, I don't particularly like that fill pattern, that motif fill pattern. So before I do anything else, I'm going to come over in under my motif fill and I'm going to select a pattern that I think will look good. The pattern that I selected is number 205. So on your properties box under pattern, you have a multitude of patterns to choose from. And when you're working on this project, you can choose any of these patterns that you want. One of the things that I encourage you to do is test your design before you put it onto your final towel. So here's 205. I select that pattern and I click on apply. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is I've got, as I said, this errant thread running through the pattern. But I found that, let me turn 3D off. We're going to um, update the pattern size. So currently that pattern is at a four millimeter and the stitch length is at four tenths of a millimeter. And that's a very small stitch. When I did the project originally, I didn't adjust the stitch length and it takes a long time for it st to stitch out and you really don't need to have those teeny tiny stitches. I'm going to update the pattern size right here to a three. 
and I'm going to change the stitch length and make it 1.5. And I found that for some reason, if you keep these evenly divisible, so for instance, I've chosen three for the pattern size and 1.5 for the stitch length, evenly divisible there. I might choose four for the pattern size and my stitch length would be a two or a one. Just make sure you keep those numbers evenly divisible. Let's go ahead and click on apply. I like the way that that fills in there, but I still have that errant stitch running through there. This is what I've discovered. I'm going to go ahead and use my stitch tool right here. When you activate your stitch tool, you've got a wealth of information available to you. First of all, this line right here controls the directionality of the stitch. And so I'm going to come over and I'm going to, instead of having that at a horizontal and vertical, I'm going to change that and make it just a little bit diagonal. I think it gave it a nice fill. And do you see what happened to that errant stitch? It's gone. I'm going to do a slow redraw. And I'm not real happy with the way that this is stitching out. I don't like how it starts stitching the fill down in here, and then it jumps up over in here, and then it jumps down over in here. Let me go back and activate my stitch tool. And this green dot right here indicates the starting point of the design. What would happen if I move that starting point from down here at the lower center of the design and maybe started the design up here in the center. So let's deselect that and let's go back and real quickly do a slow redraw. It looks a little bit better. I'm going to Once you get this so that it, you don't have any errant threads, I'm liking the spacing in here, and it's a matter of trial and error, and depending on the motif that you choose, the um, shape that you have, the alphabet letter that you use, all of those factors are going to affect the way that the software generates that motif fill in there. So you're going to want to make sure that you come in and just move these around, click off, let the software regenerate that stitch and see what the pattern looks like. And when you get it to a fill that looks good for you, that's where you're going to stop. Next, let's go ahead and re-show the other objects that are a part of our design. So I went ahead and clicked on the eyeball to bring those back so that I can see them again. Now, with my artwork selected, I'm going to go ahead in the properties box and I'm going to deselect that fill and click on apply. Just for illustrative purposes, you really don't need to do that. What we're going to do with our design is we're going to come over and the first thing that's going to stitch out is your motif fill. And when we do this, we're going to stitch it out with water soluble topping. Then what we're going to do, this is going to be one color, the machine will stop. We're going to add our heat and gone topping over the top of that and stitch out the remainder of the design. So for the cover stitch around your monogram letter in the center here, we're going to add a satin stitch over the top of it, actually a steel stitch. So I've got that selected. I come down to my stitch effects toolbar. I'm going to come right over here to this steel tool. And I'm going to select that. Currently, the width is 2.5 millimeters. You can change that if you would like, if you want it larger or smaller. The one area that I did change was the density. When we bring that in by default, the density of a steel stitch is a 0.5. I'm going to bump that up to a 0.6. Just decrease the density slightly. And this is just a matter of personal preference. But I like that. All right, click on Apply. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a satin stitch around the outside of the motif here. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to select this. And remember, this is still artwork. I've got that selected. I'm going to come down. I'm going to 
select the steel stitch, and I'm going to do the same exact thing here. I'm going to click on apply. You can create what's called a preset. I can come down with that selected. I can uh, click on the drop down in here and I can do what's called save preset and it'll remember and retain the settings that I have in here. So if I want a 6.0 density, I can name that 0.6 density. And then I'm going to make sure I spell it correctly and say OK. And then when I come back, if I wanted to create something else with that preset, instead of having to change the properties, I could just come in and go, oh, you know what? Let me make my, that my 6.0 density. And if you notice when it generates the, the stitch, it actually puts that in there as 0.60. And I will confess to you, this was not a part of the lesson, only because the lesson was getting a little detailed in there. So I'm going to click on Undo. And on the outside of the design, what we're going to do, so this is going to be the loop of the towels showing through. The loop of the towels are going to show through here because we're getting that, that embossed effect, that negative space is what's going to actually show our design. And around the outside of the design, we're going to, um, we're going to apply a motif stitch to that just to give it a decorative frame. So I've got that selected. And I'm going to come down and instead of my steel stitch, I'm going to go right here next to it and click on motif stitch. We're going to customize the run motif. So in the properties box, the first thing we're going to do, once again, as you build your project, you are more than welcome to customize the project with your personal preferences. The motif that I have selected for my project is number 239. So in the drop down, I'm going to scroll down, I'm going to locate motif 239, click on apply. I'm also going to um, change some of the properties in here. I'm going to make that stitch length a one. As you examine my project, one of the things that you'll find, and I don't like this, I don't like this corner on the upper left hand side. So I'm going to make sure that that motif is selected. And what I found is, is that if I change my run spacing, my stitch length and the pattern size, I could eliminate that corner box up there. So let's do a 3.5 in there. And do you see what happened? That corner went away. Now I'm going to deselect that. And I'm going to use my hand tool and zoom in a little bit just so that I can pan around on my motif fill and see how those corners look. So this is really nice and clean. And I'll just kind of pan around in here, pan down, check those corners. Scroll over and check those corners. So once I get that adjusted so that the corners are clean, then I'm going to leave it alone. Let me zoom to fit so that we can see the whole design. And the final step for creating this monogram is we're going to add this month's free design. So we're going to use our library tab. We're going to navigate to free FTCU projects to June of 2017. We're going to highlight the folder on the library panel and come over to the designs panel. And this is the free motif that I'm giving you this month. So we're going to left click on that and we're going to just drag it over into our design. And I'm going to move that in there and get it. I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. Go back and get my magnifying glass. And let me just... And when you are working in the software, if you want to do what's called nudge, and I have demonstrated this in multiple lessons, and I use this tool a lot, I'm going to hold my control key, and I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard. And what I'm doing right here is I'm just nudging this, and I want that edge of the design to line up just barely under the motif fill in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom to fit. And we're going to duplicate that design. So I'm going to click my duplicate button. I'm going to 
grab that. I'm going to drag it over here. And I'm going to repeat the process on the right hand side. So I'm going to magnify in to zoom in. And I'm just going to move that design over. And now I'm nudging it. So I have my control key down. And I just want a little bit of overlap. Yep. Looks good. And let's zoom to fit again. Now, there's no way I would take this to my machine and stitch it out. So I'm going to collapse everything. First of all, these objects right here, I want to select them. And of course, I have to make sure that they are aligned across the horizontal edge of the design. Okay, now once I have those aligned, the last step that I want to do is I'm going to change the colors here. And I'm going to use two colors when I stitch out the design. The first color that I'm going to use, and this is up to you, I really don't care what color the design is while I'm working in the software because I'm going to pick the color when I get to my machine. In my software, one of the things that I use color changes for is to force my machine to stop. So even if you only create this embroidery design with one color of thread, we're going to use the same process. So I've got this design right here, and that's going to be the fill, and I'm going to leave it the default color that it came in as. I'm going to select the first layer right here. I'm holding my control key. I come down. I'm going to select the K the motif underneath it, and the design stitches because these will all be the same color. And all I'm going to do now is come down and click on that number five. Okay. So what it did is, there's the one color. I don't want this to stitch out first, so I want to change the order. I actually want this to be the first thing to stitch out so I can either drag and drop it or I can right click, I can choose move to first. Okay, and this is still going to have a machine stop right there. So I will select those and of course use my color sort. There you go. Before we take this design to our machine, I created the initial design and tried the project. And as I was stitching out, um, my project, my actual towel. This first part of the design, as I mentioned previously, I used water soluble topping. I laid the topping down, stitched the motif fill stitch, the machine stopped. Then I pulled off the excess water soluble topping around from the inside of the design and around the outside of the design. Then I laid a piece of Floriani heat and gone topping over the towel and stitched out the remainder of the design. And I, I used embroidery perfection tape to keep the topping in place. But as I was working on the design, I thought, you know, it would be great to have a basting stitch. I wish I could lay down my heat and gone topping and then just have a quick basting stitch come around, stitch around the outside of the topping and hold it in place. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to make sure that everything's selected. We're going to come up to this tool right here, which is called Auto Based Feature, and we're going to select that. By default, when you use the Auto Based Feature, it makes that the first object to stitch out because realistically, that's where a basting stitch would be. But we're not going to stitch that out first. We're going to take the motif fill. We're going to drag it up. We're going to move that to first. So this is going to stitch out. I'm going to have my water soluble topping. The machine will stop. I'll remove the excess topping. I'll um, actually, I changed thread colors. I used two thread colors when I was working on my design. So this was the first color. I stopped the machine. I put in my second thread color. I laid my heat and gone topping over the top of the design right here. And now we've got this wonderful basting stitch. And so you will lay down your heat and gone topping right here. 
and I would still tape it in place with a couple of pieces of embroidery perfection tape. But now what's going to happen is, is that this basting stitch is going to come around. It's going to tack that heat and gone topping down in place. And then you can stitch out the remainder of the design and it's going to stitch out for you beautifully. You're going to love this little technique. Now, the last thing I'm going to do before I move my design to my machine and actually start working on the project, I'm going to use the simulate sewing just to observe how this design is going to stitch out. Because if I need to make, if I'm not happy with something and if I need to make changes, I can do this. And I, sometimes you can catch this in the software. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes you just have to move your design to the machine and you need to stitch it out on the machine in order to see, you know, maybe the way that it stitches or fills something in or something like that. But let's go ahead. This is your simulate sewing button right there. And we can go ahead and we can speed that up just a little bit. I'm going to watch how this stitches out. Okay, as I was observing that stitching out, I see a couple of things right off the bat that I would change before I actually took it to my machine. First of all, uh, when you look at the basting feature, there are these little lines that baste in there and they're actually for measurement purposes. So what I would probably do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete that basting stitch. I'm going to come back up under my tools menu and come down into preferences because you have the ability let's go into the auto base tab and on the auto base tab there's a box right here called add crosshairs to the basting feature I'm going to deselect that I'm going to say okay now I'm going to go back I'm going to add my auto based and now I no longer have those cross features so I'll just do the same thing where I move this down. So that's just an example of some of the things you can do before you take your design to the machine to stitch it out. Another thing, and this is just a very minor thing, but um, I don't know if you caught this, but the motif stitch around the outside of the design stitch first, and these little motifs stitch last. So what's going to happen is, is that the thread that I so carefully matched up over here on the side is actually going to stitch on top of the motif. And on the loop towels, you may not even notice that. But before I took this to the machine and stitched it out, I would fix that. And um, to fix it, I would have to go back in under my sequence view window. I'd have to come back in and select those different items right there. And when it's selected, I would change the order of when that stitches out. So I probably would take this run motif and move this last. And then what's going to happen is it's going to stitch out here. That's going to stitch out. This is going to stitch out and there. So that's just an example of before you, as you work on your design, before you save it and before you go to the machine, use that simulate sewing feature so that you can observe this and 
actively analyze how this is going to stitch out before you ever move it especially if you've been embroidering for a while then you'll know these kinds of things you'll go oh I don't want to have those crosshairs in there can I get rid of them of course you can oh you know what when this stitches out this needs to be underneath the motif can I move that and of course you can and not only I think the good thing about working on a design from start to finish building your own design in the software is that a lot of times we'll have designs that we purchase. If you purchase a design, you can bring it into your software. You can use your simulate sewing feature with your purchase design. You can analyze how that design is going to stitch out and you can actually make the same kind of changes on that design as we did here. So with that being said, we're ready to save our design to stitch out and we are going to I highly recommend this and I've said it three times and it's in your handout before you embroider this design on your nice towels on your good towels and towels can get be really expensive now depending on the quality of the towels that you're using but before you embroider this design onto your good towels embroider it do a test stitch out on a towel first not just you know use the same quality of material for the test sample as for your final project and sometimes I've done this when I'm buying towels I'll buy an extra washcloth and I will stitch out the design on that extra washcloth and you know then I just have a rag or something that I can use because a washcloth a washcloth cost a lot less than a bath towel. With that being said, we're ready to save our design. We're going to come down. We're going to click on our file save. Remember that with our latest update, we actually, um, when we save our design, we no longer have to do a file save as because it will save our design not only as our WAF file, but it will also save it in the format for the machine that we're working with if we have that set up. I always like to include a reminder of where you can locate the handout for your project. So you will go into your C drive. You will look for the folder titled Floriani. There is a folder within that called Designs, your free FTCU projects, June, June of 2017. Within that folder, you will find a PDF file that you can print off that has your instructions. In that folder, you will also find your free design for this month and also the free artwork that I created and included in there. That's where that all installs. Construction tips for your project. First of all, let's real quickly talk about thread selection. Take your towel and you want to use a thread. I found the best results if you use a thread that's in the same color family as the towel, but it's, there's a slight contrast there. So it's either a little bit lighter or a little bit darker. And I incorporated two thread colors into my project, and I think it looked really, really nice. I used a lighter color for the fill, the motif fill, and then I used a little bit darker color to finish out the embroidery design. I strongly urge you to use your Floriani thread chart to match your color. When you use your thread chart, you can't even see this, but my towel is laid down next to this. Because of the way that the thread is wound on the thread chart, and this is actual thread, when it is wound, it's called straight wound on there. And it reflects light differently than when the thread is wound on the spool. So make sure that you are using your thread chart. It's a very small investment, but it really helps you as you go through the process of trying to find colors that match perfectly. You want to use a coordinating bobbin thread. Now, a lot of times when I'm doing embroidery, I use a white thread on the bottom or a dark thread on the bottom. I don't usually match my thread. It's not really a big deal. And there's a reason for this. Your machine is set up when you do embroidery, your bottom tension is set tighter than your top tension. And when you embroider a design and your uh, tension is set correctly, that bottom tension actually pulls the top thread around to the back of the design. So you do not see the bottom thread 
showing through. And if you can see your bottom thread, and that's a lot of times while we use a lighter color thread or a white thread, because if you have a tension issue when you are embroidering, if you see your top thread showing through there and it's a contrasting color, you can stop and you can fix it. Now in this project, because we're going to see the back of a towel, you need to use a coordinating thread in your bobbin. So it really is important. I recommend in the bobbin a lighter weight thread. There's a reason for that too. Lighter weight threads, threads that have larger numbers, our embroidery thread is a 40 weight. What I'm talking about is, for instance, Floriani Micro Thread, which is a 60 weight, or this is a beautiful thread to use, and what I used was Quilter Select Para Cotton Poly. And our Para Cotton Poly thread, it's actually a polyester thread. It is finished to look like a cotton thread, but it's 80 weight. So with that Quilter Select Para Cotton Poly, if you have a machine like mine, you're going to need to wind your own bobbin. So I buy the thread on the spool. Those of you that have standard size bobbins in your machines, the beautiful thing about Quilter Select Para Cotton Poly is that it comes in pre-wound bobbins. And this thread, this Quilter Select 80 weight, the thread colors that are there actually match our embroidery threads. So you get a beautiful, beautiful finish. So you can buy those pre-wound bobbins in there and it matches your embroidery threads. Thinner bobbins hold more thread. And the nice thing is, is that when you wind your bobbin with a lightweight thread, you will not have to change your bobbin thread very frequently. And I did all of the all of the towels. I embroidered like six or eight towels and did not have to change my bobbin thread. So I really, that's a nice feature in there. As far as working with the towels, I do recommend marking the towels. And I used a temporary marking utensil and the utensil that I use this time, normally I use a friction pen, but actually this is a pen that I picked up somewhere and I really do like it. It's an air pen. And so you, when you mark with it, it, it goes on in this nice bright fuchsia color. So you can really see your marking in there. And then once, uh, after an hour or so, the marking just disappears. So I, I really do kind of like this. I like to mark my thread horizontally, of course, and vertically. So I put lots of marks on there because it just helps me to line things up better. But I do recommend using um, something to mark your towels. We're going to use Floriani Wet and Gone Tacky Stabilizer. I tried this project. Another of the stabilizers that we recommend for towels is our Floriani Wet and Stick. It's a great product to use if you're embroidering on a towel and you're doing something that's got a satin stitch or like a satin stitch monogram or some kind of a design. It's not a good stabilizer to use with this project because when you do that, because we've got that motif fill, you, there's no way that on the reverse side of the towel that you're going to be able to remove all of the rem remnants of that stabilizer. So I'm going to tell you right now, use Florian and Wet and Gone Tacky because then once you um, have finished the project and you wash the towels, everything's going to be gone off the back and they're going to look really, really nice. So you're going to hoop your Floriani Wet and Gone Tacky Stabilizer with the paper side up. You're going to score that, and I recommend scoring it with a stiletto. And in the new Educator Favorite Tool Collection, you have a stiletto within that collection. So great, great tool set to add to your arsenal. But what you want to do is, after you score that, and I like to score all the way around the perimeter of my hoop, and then I do an X through the middle here, and then I carefully peel the paper back and it will remove this wonderful tacky surface in there and then you're gonna lay your towel down on there. You'll lay your towel onto the hoop. So align your towel on there. This is just a tip. I have a clear plastic grid so you can see my markings on the bottom there. I laid my grid over the top. I actually tape my grid in place with Floriani Embroidery Perfection Tape, and then as I move it over to my hoop, the grid stays adhered to my, um, my project. You can also use this technique. You can fold your towel in half. You can actually mark the wet and gone, and, and I just used a pen and marked my cross center in there. 
fold your towel in half, lay your towel down and half there, and then smooth it out. And to be perfectly honest with you, I did a combination of both of those. Not only did I mark my towel, I also marked the wet and gone tacky in the hoop. I folded the towel, I laid it down on there, and then I matched it up. So I kind of did a, a double death in there. Topping is critical with this project. We're going to utilize two different types of topic. So for the first part of the project, for topic number one, and this is behind the motif fill, okay, I utilized Floriani water soluble topping. This will hold the loops of the towel down while you're stitching the motif fill. Then when you wash the towel, the wet and gone topping will wash away and the loops on the towel are actually going to work their way back through that motif fill in there and it'll give it a, a totally different texture. We're going to also utilize Floriati heat and gone topping. So after you have stitched the motif fill, you're going to add Floriani heat and gone topping and that's what we put that basting stitch in there for. The heat and gone topping will get trapped underneath your threads. It becomes a permanent stabilizer. So remember we're using wet and gone on the back to hold the towel in place. Once we wash the towels, the wet and gone is gone. The heat and gone topping stays underneath the motif fills, uh, around the outside of that, under the little um, designs, and it will keep your embroidery looking really, really nice on those towels. So the Floriani heat and gone acts as your permanent stabilizer, and it remains behind after you wash this. As far as removal of the heat and gone topping, I left my towel in the hoop to remove the heat and gone topping. And I removed as much of the excess topping as I possibly could. This is another tool from the new tool collection, the Educator Tool Collections. This is a, a pair of scissors and the scissors on one side has a little rounded point. So they're pointed on one side, they're rounded on the other side. I slid those scissors down underneath that heat and gone topping and cut a little slit in it. Then I came back with my seam ripper, and this is the ball of the seam ripper, and I inserted that underneath the heat and gone topping, and I ran it right along this edge of this satin stitch right there. Once I did that, then I could just take my tweezers and peel away the topping here. So we really, I found that when you're using heat and gone topping, don't try to remove it all with your iron. Peel away as much of that topping as you possibly can. Then whatever's left behind, you're going to remove the remainder with a warm iron. Now this is one of those, the heat and gone topping works wonderfully if your iron is the proper temperature. And you want to preheat your iron, you want to, and you want to start with a warm iron. Don't start with your iron on the warmest setting, on the hottest setting, start with it warm and work your way up. And by the way, Teflon irons don't work for this. Those of you that have those no stick irons, you need to have a, um, an iron that has a, a stainless steel surface on there. When it comes to finishing the project, um, so the towels are still in the hoop, you're going to carefully remove the towels from the hoop and you want to gently pull away the towels off of your wet wet and gone tacky stabilizer here. And as I said, you want to do this gently. And if you do it gently, you shouldn't have that stabilizer pulling any of the loops. It's a wonderful stabilizer to use for this project. It is aggressive enough that it's going to hold the towel in place. And when you are done, if you gently peel that back, and then I came along, uh, I've got a nice little edge there, and I just came back with my scissors, and I cut the excess topping away and I didn't try to peel everything off the back of that. This is water soluble topping. So before I wash the towels, I go over to my sink, I run them under water, I peel away as much of this excess topping as I can and then I put them into the washing machine, wash them and dry them and everything looks really good. So once you have that topping removed on there, you're just going to repeat this process with your remaining towels.
I hope you enjoyed this month's project. I know it was much more software intensive, but a lot of people have asked, how can I do that embossed effect on towels? So hopefully this helped you. As you go through the handout, Kathy Quinn also did a video. It's in your weekly educational videos. I put a link in the handout that you can um, access and you can refer to her video. She goes through the whole, you know, how did I learn how to use the artwork to create an embossed effect? I watched Kathy Quinn's video. So when you get done, remember that um, we have the Floriani Embroidery Group and love to see your projects up there. If you're on Instagram, you can post it on Instagram. And when you do in the description, just type in at Casey Farrell, and then it'll actually come directly to me and post to your Instagram feed. Or same thing on Twitter. You can put in at Casey Farrell. It'll come directly to me. We also have Floriani Embroidery. So if you're doing Instagram, you can do at Floriani Embroidery. Also the hashtags. When we hashtag it, that's a description in there. Hashtag June Project. Hashtag Floriani Embroidery. And what those hashtags are for is they allow you to search based on the title of that. So it's really kind of a fun thing to do. Don't be afraid of... Uh, Instagram and Twitter. If you have any questions about the project, I always include my email. I'm Kathy F at rnkdistributing.com. Come back for the July project. In July, we're going to create a pocketed tablecloth using a design from the Americana applique collection. Until then, this is Kathy Farrell. Thank you so much for joining me, and I look forward to the July project of the month.